Hey guys, it's Steve here with the Wired Flyer, where we break down complex aviation concepts in the simplest way possible. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down some airfoil basics, specifically the wing camber design, because the curvature of a wing plays a big role in the lift, drag, and just overall performance of the aircraft. So let's dive right in. So first of all, what is wing camber? Well, it is the curvature of the wing itself on the upper and lower surfaces from the leading edge of the wing to the trailing edge of the wing. So if we're flying this wing, you're looking at the wing in this direction. Now we're talking about this curvature of the wing here. Okay, so before we can get into the different camber designs, we have to understand what a wing camber line is. So in this picture I drew, in the red, I have a wing cambered line. And that is what happens when you draw a line halfway between the upper and lower surfaces right like so and on the top here is an example of a symmetrical wing where the line is drawn perfectly straight because the upper and lower surfaces are equal whereas this is a camber design because there is a curvature in the camber line itself so why do different aircrafts have different camber designs let's look at the most common ones and their impact on flight and as we just briefly went over there are really two main types symmetrical and camber so let's first talk about symmetrical airfoils now a symmetrical airfoil has no camber at all no difference in curvature from the top and bottom surfaces and when it's flying at an angle of tack of zero which is just flat like so towards the relative airflow then it is not going to produce any lift now this is perfect for aerobatic aircrafts because they want to fly the same upright as they do inverted so that's the first type now let's look into some camber designs and we're going to go over three different ones right now and the first one is going to be a low cambered airfoil so having just a little bit of camber helps you improve your efficiency while still maintaining good speed so at a zero angle of attack these low cambered wings are going to produce a little bit of lift and this is most common in general aviation and some airliners for example the Cessna 172 has a low cambered wing now looking at a highly cambered airfoil where there's a lot more curvature in the airfoil itself these are going to generate a lot more lift at slower speeds and these are going to be perfect for short runways where you have short takeoffs and short landings these are usually ideal for bush pilots but having that extra curve also produces a little bit of drag so you won't see it in airliners and the last wing design we're going to be talking about today is the reflexed camber airfoil so if you're looking at the wing like this it's curved like this but it also curves up at the back now the reason why there's an extra curve that goes upwards in the back is because there is no traditional tail on these types of aircraft so they need something to help stabilize the airplane an example of that would be the b2 spirit stealth bomber so now that we've gone over the different designs let's talk about the pros and cons to a cambered airfoil in comparison to a symmetrical airfoil one of the benefits is that the more camber you add the more lift you can generate at slow speeds, which makes it great for general aviation purposes because it helps generate a significant amount of lift. Having cambered wings are also very versatile because you can increase or decrease the curvature of the design based on the purpose or needs that have to be fulfilled. And one of the greatest benefits is the lower stall speed, which plays a huge role in having safe takeoffs and landings, which helps decrease the amount of accidents in an airplane as you can fly at slower speeds at a greater angle of attack now let's talk about the cons of having a cambered wing well one of the necessary evils of having more lift in a cambered design is that you're naturally gonna have more drag kind of the necessary evil and that can affect your fuel efficiency and overall performance especially at high speeds now while cambered wings really excel at generating lift at lower speeds at higher speeds, they can actually cause quite a bit of drag, affecting the performance quite a bit. So cambered wings usually are not ideal for high speed situations. And that increased drag actually affects the top speed of the aircraft. Now, maybe you're wondering, what's the best camber design? Well, there is no best camber design as camber design simply depends on the aircraft and what it's designed to do. Faster airplanes require a lower camber to reduce drag at high speeds, while slower airplanes require higher camber to generate that extra lift. Now, here's a little fun fact. Many commercial airliners actually have a variable camber design they use flaps to change the wing shape for takeoffs and landings so there you guys have it kind of the basics to camber designs 
Thanks for watching. This was Steve with The Wired Flyer. Please hit that like button and please subscribe if you like aviation content. I have a ton of theory videos like this as well as some flight simulation videos. So until next time, keep learning, stay motivated, and chase your dreams. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.